as it lies there on the floor, just breathe into it and push the roller out. Super simple, but just make sure the knees don't collapse, all those usual things, and then pull it back. Super simple, but just to make sure that we are integrating everything so we're not collapsing or just hyperextending or doing anything that we don't need to be doing. We'll just do a couple more of those. It's nice to inhale to push out, exhale to come back, push out. One more of those. Pull it back. Now, why don't we grab that uh, the band? You might want to double it up just so it's not in the face. It's a long one like mine. So we'll just add the same. So it's basically, we're just self tractioning, you could say. Uh, so we lightly pull out on the band. The collarbones open up. The shoulder blades spread in the back. So here we go. So we could inhale. Same project. We'll just add the arm components. So the shoulder blades have to upwardly rotate. They come under the armpits. Exhale back. So you might get a little more of a stretch feeling, and obviously in the shoulders that you wouldn't have before. And at the same time, you do have to stabilize in some sense, but better not to think about that sometimes. So as long as we're not flopping all over the place, inhale, lengthen, exhale back, and just two more. Get yourself extra, extra long. You're being pulled in opposite directions. Last one of those. And then we'll just take it into the abdominal curl, but let's reverse the, uh, the leg position. So let's start with the arms and the legs extended. And then as we, oh, I guess it's the same pattern actually. So as we exhale, we'll just curl into a little ball shape. You can come onto your tiptoes if you want. Inhale, push back out. Exhale to curl into the little uh, crunch position. Not that it's a crunch and then open it up. So just three more, just opening up the shoulder blades and the upper back. A little abdominal work, a lightweight. Last one. All right, and then let's just pull that roller in, walk it or I have to put your feet on the other side of it and just scoot it into your pelvis for a second. Grab the ends of it. We'll pop our pelvis on top of the on top of the center of the roller. We did this last was it last week or a couple of weeks ago, but um, so the feet are flat. Hopefully we're warmed up enough. But especially if I, I was on a normal roller the other day, and I realized how much bigger it is in my roller. So if you ever need to put a couple of yoga blocks or books under your feet for this position, go for it. So you're not too popped in the front. But having said that, let's just do our pelvic tilt series. So as we exhale, scoop the pubic bone to your chest. You're just getting a little kind of flexion in your lower back and then inhale, you rock forward. So you may feel your ribs lift. We're not gonna worry about it. And exhale to curl. We could make it the, the bigger one that I often do with my Friday class. So when you inhale, if you tip your pelvis forward, you will notice your chin gets pulled down and your ribs lift up. That's natural. And when you do a pelvic tilt, it would be natural for the, the ribs to tip down and your chin to get pulled in as well. So it's kind of like a full body, even though we're initiating at the hips, we are feeling the whole spine responding, like the end, one end of the chain or one end of the string of pearls, if you prefer pearls to chains. So just do two more. Now, as we finish in that curl, let's just do a three, five or six pelvic clocks. So we're just taking that same idea, except we're now circling it over to the right side of the pelvis down to the tailbone over to the left side. 12 o'clock would be the waistband. Eight o'clock would be maybe the right side of the hip. Tailbone would be uh, six <laughs> over up to three on the left, etc. So if that doesn't work for you, just think of a circle. You can also think of just pressing all the numbers in that little, could be a big clock, could be a little clock. After five or six, reverse course, so other direction. Now, if we're a little tight in our hip joints, you may notice the knees will want to do extra things or maybe the feet start to come off the floor. But once you're aware of that, just try to isolate it a bit more. A couple more of those. Two. One. And then let's do a pelvic tilt to initiate the knees to chest position. And then from here, uh, we'll just... I just want to get myself on this roll. Just do a little rock to the right, and then you can open the knees like a frog and then rock to the left. So a fairly casual version of our twist. So you're just more for the massage. And if you have a space, you could add a little swing of the top leg. So you rock over, you do a little swing or kick. I'm going to watch my machine here, my plant. You can open the arms. I, I was holding onto the roller. You can do that. Or you can just rest the arms on the floor. Just, just don't want to roll off this roller. <laughs> A couple more of those, turning your head if you want to away from the legs. And one more each way. All right, and then we'll get to work in our standing position. So we'll pull the knees in. Let's just roll down out of here. And we can roll our way up one way or another. We'll make our way up to standing. Won't do too much standing work because of the heat, but um, do a little bit. Okay, so let me just tip my monitor up a little and get sorted. Okay, I think we're good. Yes, perfect. Okay, so let's do, we'll do the hip hinges first, just a few, just a good old fashioned 
stretch out. So you just push, push the roller out and then lead with the pelvis to pull it in. So if we always think of the hips being our driver of most things, pretty much everything else feels better as a result. So that way we're not hyperextending the back in any place. We're not overdoing the shoulder joint. Um, so yeah, the hips are in charge for most things during the day. <laughs> Couple more of those. Not to say we can not arch a little bit here. It might feel good to add a little extra at the end. If your shoulders don't object to that, you could sink the upper back a little bit if that feels nice, but I wouldn't do it if your shoulders were a bit tight or not feeling well. All right, and then we'll bring that back. So let's put the roller, uh, we'll put it more in front of your left foot, right hand on top, bend that left knee, and we'll just put the other foot, you can have it as a kickstand as we figure out the choreography, but eventually we can pick up that foot. So we're just, we're just straight, we're tall, we're, it's, it's a hip hinge yet again, so we're going to swing the left arm backwards, push the roller out, and because we're on one leg, or let me put it this way, because we're pushing the roller out with the right arm, there's a tiny bit of rotation, it's quite small, but your left hip will get pulled back, not to the left or too much to the right, but just it just gets pulled back through the center a bit more effectively than if we didn't have the roller here. And then we press the pelvis forward, we will we'll keep the knee bent. So you can do it a few with the toe on the ground, looking straight ahead, you pull your hip backwards in space, and then you press your hip forward. Let me take a look at everybody. Yeah, that's good. So inhale for the reach with the sit bones back. Yeah, that looks excellent, everyone. You could try it with no toe on the floor just for fun. If you don't feel it in the glute quite enough, it could be that you just need to bring your center of gravity a little more forward on that left foot. So you might have to pitch forward a little bit, not so much that we fall on our head, but just enough that there's a little more load to that glute. It likes being loaded in a lengthened position, not just tightening it all the time as silly exercises. So we'll just do a couple more. And the final one, if you wanna go for it, we can hold here with or without your tiptoes on the floor. But if you want that little extra, wherever you are, you may be perfectly happy. I'm already feeling it working quite fine. But if you want a little extra, you can pitch forward even more, not so much that we're falling on our toe tips, but just enough so you're definitely feeling you're about to go. It's like we're about to leap forward in space. One more breath there, that's good. And then pull your pelvis back underneath your ribs and we'll <laughs> shake that leg out. Hopefully that was enough reps for you. It was, it was for me. <laughs> All right, so shake that out, other side. So if we have the roller in front of it, so it's our right leg, left hand on top, just get your base position, soften that knee, bend it as much as you're, it's willing to go without any strain. Um, the weight will be in your midfoot, kind of this area of the foot rather than the heel. So if your leg is straight, it's in our heel as we bend it, it's more in the midfoot. Okay, so here we go. So we'll just push that roller out. It's like a streetcar track from the heel of that left hand into your kneecap, into your hip socket. So if you notice your hip joint sort of out there, pull it back a bit, back, and then we press everything forward. So it's really just a straight line. The rotation is quite, it's, the rotation keeps us in the straight line. Yeah, so if it, yeah, that looks good. That looks good, yeah. So inhale, if you like to sit back in the hip. Exhale to come forward. So there's equal distance or equal energy through both ends of the body, through the pelvis and through the, the hand. Yeah, it looks great. Front ribs are collected. We're not dumping into the low back or mid thoracic. So two more of those, and we'll add that little extra challenge if you want it. So you could, oh, feel free. Of course, you may already be doing this, but I can't see everyone's feet, but you could have your tiptoes off the ground. But you know what? If it gets too crazy doing that, I would just keep, if you really want to focus on glute strength, you, I just do it for fun sometimes just to test myself, but really it's probably best to keep the toe on the floor, at least for me. So once you get it, the final one will hold it. And then you can play with pitching forwards. So it's like if we're on a sandy beach, the, 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 the imprint of your foot is more at the front part of the foot pulling the hip back in that streetcar track away from the heel of your hand. And then oh, let's pull ourselves up. All right, so I think that's enough glute work, I would say. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, we'll lie down on this roller now so you can get your roller down there. Um, let's grab the little weights. We'll just do a few, nothing arduous, but just a nice way to add uh, awareness to our arms. especially if the heaviest thing we lift in the day is a cell phone, <laughs> which may not be the case in your case, but I don't really, unless I'm doing grocery shopping, I don't actually lift a lot of things during the day, unless I force myself. All right, this isn't that heavy, but it's something. All right, so here we go. We're just, let's relax for a few moments. If you, I'm not gonna cue your feet, just do whatever you want right now, but with the arms, because, it, well, I was gonna say, let's give ourselves a hug, but let's change that idea because of the heat. Instead, uh, let's reach the arms up like you're hugging a beach ball. 
And just doing that, if you reach from your shoulder blades, so they come wide to the side of ourselves, spreading out. It's very small, but it's enough to feel like now, you're, now you can soften your sternum, soften the ribs, and you don't feel so much caught in the front of your body. So we're more feeling the back of our body on the roller a bit more effectively. So just take maybe three breaths. We'll inhale through the nose. Just easy. No, no hurry here. Better, the slower, the better, actually. No stress. Slowly exhale. Long sigh. Two more breaths. So it's almost like you feel the balloon inflating on the inhale that you're holding. And then the balloon deflates as we exhale. Take your time. Last breath. And even if I'm breathing faster, I often, you know, if I were doing this on my own time, I would breathe a lot slower than I do when I'm teaching. So always take that into consideration. You don't have to follow my, my speed by any means. All right. So once you're done your final exhale, let's make your arms a little straighter. You can bring your feet a little narrower now. We'll just do a few of these simple scissor actions. So one arm forward, one arm back. Just getting some basic range of motion in. Are the lats willing to lengthen to allow us to keep a straight elbow? If they're not, just respect that and just go as far as you can. But in time, you just keep lengthening that area. So a couple more, and then we'll add it, make it a little more exciting for the brain and the balance. So next time, maybe the, I'm just going to have my left arm behind me, right arm by my hip. So if we circle each arm out to its own side, so we end up with the left arm by the hip, the right arm by the right ear, and then we just keep scissoring that. So it's always the left arm goes back first. We do the switch. We scissor. So don't bother changing direction. That would just be too complicated for me anyway. So we'll just keep going with the left arm being the leading backward arm. Just letting your core do what it needs to do. So we maintain our equilibrium here with all this motion that we're doing. And then let's pause at the next one at the top. Now let's lead with the right. So right arm scissors back. Feel free to go slowly at first just to get the pattern. But you may already have, have it uh, figured out. So you can go at your own speed, almost like a helicopter. A little breeze in your place. Couple more of those. Great. So when you're all done, let's open the arms. Open them so wide that you're almost pulling out. I wouldn't go to the floor or lower than the, the roller itself, although I started to do that, but then I caught myself. So it's not that it's bad, but you just will get a better stretch. If you can think of pulling more from the elbow, and we're trying to keep the shoulder blade nice and wide. So just take a breath or two there, trying to just feel a lengthening in the chest wall. And let's relax that. Let's grab those little weights. We'll just do a few of the standard uh, some curls, etc., with them. So if you bring your elbows onto the floor to get yourself sorted, uh, palms facing in, reach the arms up. Let's do, well, since we're here, let's just do eight of those chest openers being on that tangent. So inhale, we're open, so it's a soft elbow. Just think of ballet arms so that we don't have to look pretty doing this, but we're, maybe we do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we're opening and we're closing. So we're just keeping that nice alignment of the shoulder blades which is more functional than if we were to squeeze our shoulder blades. So we'll just do a couple more. Not that it's the end of the world, but it just helps us find the stretch we're looking for. So last one of those, we'll bring the arms up, turn the palms forward. So you all know this. So we'll just start with the arms going a little bit backwards, depending on the kind of weights you have. I'm just going to go a little bit back, nod the chin, and then we just curl up into the standard uh, prep. That's it. So we front ribs close down, on the uh, close inwards, I should say. And then we reach the weights up, we arc back. So we'll just keep it simple. We'll do a two count breath, exhale on the way up. But go right to the end of that exhale. Just squeeze that little extra bit of air out. Inhale up and back. So just two more, and then we'll make it a little more exciting. Last one. Okay. Now, as your arms go back, if you may have, if, I think everyone's weights are fairly light with this, so we should be okay. But open the arms out to the side a little higher than your roller until they're by your hips, scoop them up to the ceiling. Palms will be facing the back wall. So just turn them around up there, arc them back. We'll just do a couple more angels this way, circle the arms out to the side, scoop them back. Now keep going with that pattern, except as you do the scooping of your palms up to the ceiling, maybe try lifting one foot just for a second and then keep going with your standard uh, angel wing here. Maybe it's bad to multitask like this, <laughs> but let's try. One foot, and then you put it down, scooping. It's like the knee and the arms scoop together. And just remember to turn the weights around, of course, before you continue backwards. So we'll do one more each side. 
interestingly, it's harder for me to do it this way because I'm so used to coming at it from the other direction with the arms when the knee lifts. So just thought it would be an interesting challenge for everyone. And when you're all done with that, let's let the weights rest for a moment. Put your right hand behind your head, just the right one. Left arm for now, let's leave it on the floor, but you can have your elbow off the floor if you want. Just make sure the shoulder head's falling back. Let's fold that left knee to tabletop. Yeah, you got it. And then we'll do a little bit of just the, the oblique uh, crisscross in this position. So you can have a pointed toe or flex foot, whatever appeals. And we'll rotate torso towards the left knee. So the right elbow sort of reaches across and then you come back. Now, theoretically, this is possible without the left hand on the floor. So you could reach it long and just sort of hover it. As an emergency landing, always you can always put your hand back down. So I think this is, I'll find out, I think my other side is much worse. So I'm glad I started on this side. So exhale, we rotate. Inhale down. So just three more on this side. Take your time. And if you're if it's too wobbly, I always say just regress it a little bit. There's nothing wrong with doing it well with the hand on the floor. Because I always find there's always that hard side. Everybody has it. Usually unless you're there's no, I don't think it's possible to be symmetrical, honestly. But we'll do one more. Because the body is not symmetrical, even on the inside. So let's put that down. And then we have our habits too, which are not symmetrical. Switch sides. So left hand behind the head, right knee folds in. Just get that basic position. And when you're ready, exhale. I, I can definitely feel the side is a little harder for me. So ooh, I'll try it with no hands, but I think I'll put a finger on the floor for this side. So I do want to get my obliques figuring this out. So exhale for the rotation. And we, I am changing things. Sometimes I say don't move the elbow, but I, you, you lead with the, the chest turns, but I'd like to just reach the elbow just a tiny bit to get the stretch into the shoulder blades. We'll do a couple more. I find that for most people I teach, their right side is actually stronger and the left side is harder, but for me, it always seems to be the opposite. So we'll do one more. And oh, let's relax. Stretch both legs long. Do a few of those heel rocks. So just make sure you're fully on that roller and we'll do a few just uh, flexing and pointing. Propel yourself off your heels. Allow your skull to respond very naturally. Your ribs, your pelvis. All right, so let's leave that. We'll bring both feet in and we'll finish with just a little bit. I did want to do a little bit of the hissing breath today. It's just a nice way to get the diaphragm working and not, not you, because we've already done the abs. There's so many layers and it's easy to get the surface layers. It's actually hard to get the deeper ones. So if we take the obliques out of the picture, so what we'll do is we'll do it with the exercise of the knee fold into the, uh, the hip flexor stretch. So let's fold the right knee up. We'll stretch it high and flex your foot. So we'll just take an extra inhale to get it started here. And then as you exhale, so rather than just breathing out through the mouth, think of it as a hissing sound, like a snake. And as you do that, you press your heel slowly down to the floor. So try to time it so that however long it takes you to hiss, it might take a few times to get that right. But so by the time you land the heel, you're fully expelled all the air with a hit, with a, a hiss that doesn't get, make sure it doesn't fade out and get a little choppy at the end. And then inhale, fold back in. So it's very simple. So hissing on the way down. Inhaling to fold in. So that's my actual timing. If I were to do this without talking. And what you notice is you may not notice much until about half, at least for me, my experience of this is um, you may not notice your rib cage getting smaller until maybe halfway to three quarters in because we can't use it. It's hard to use the, the obliques with this one. I don't even want you to. So it's more just, it's just the diaphragm moving. So it's, it just, it's, it's less muscles involved, but more deeper ones. It's just an interesting way to get in there. So just try a couple more. Also, it makes sure that her jaw is relaxed because you can't really grimace and do this. You're almost smiling. At least I hope so. <laughs> Face is relaxed. Let's do one more of the side. Also quite a bit of quad strengthening because we're going so slowly. And then when you're done, I'll just let you finish your cycle and then just pause as you finish that set. And then we'll get ready for leg number two. So you can fold the knee in, stretch the tippy toes and then the heel up, kissing on the way down. Okay. 
Inhale to fold back in. You may not get all oh, I just thought of this now because I usually do this on the floor, to be honest, and I don't do the, the leg motions, but I just thought to incorporate make it into an exercise. But um, but you could also put your hands on your ribs, assuming your elbows can reach the floor. So you can feel what's happening. Or the physical change. Maybe you can feel that without putting your hands on, but it's just kind of I always like having the hands on. So just do two more on the side. Kissing slowly, jaw relaxed, facial muscles relaxed. There's nothing really uh, just to think about here. Just just not hurt, not rushing and actually getting all the air out. And most of us actually are shallow breathers, I find, from what I've read anyway, and just my own experience. So it's good to just get that little extra bit of air out. And then our inhale is so much more relaxed and the nervous system relaxes. All right, when we're done with that, we'll just finish that off. We'll do one more set of the heel rock. So if you just wanna stretch the right leg only this time. And if you, if you have the range of motion, you can actually have your left arm sort of behind you. So it won't really be on the floor except maybe the fingertips, just bend your elbow for that. Or you could have it more out to the side. I don't want anyone feeling awkward in that shoulder socket. So you just do a few heel rocks to so the right side only. And let me see, it might take a bit of coordination here, but in theory, this is usually done on the mat, by the way, but kind of, I just, add things onto the roller that are usually done on the mat, but why not? And eventually you might feel a diagonal from your right heel, right hip into your left shoulder, maybe the left arm. All right, then we'll try the other side. Left heel presses out, right arm either out to the side or behind. Rock the heel. All right, and you're all done with that. We'll slide the foot in. Let's come on off of here so you can roll on down. And let's, we'll use the band, we'll do some bridging with the band. Can move these weights out of the way. Get just some little bit of work in the hamstrings. So we'll have the arches of our feet on that roller. Just pretty standard position. Nothing, I won't do anything horrendous tonight with the heels up. So the, the heels are just relaxed. However, we will use the arms. So let's double that band. Use it as a spacer so, so we don't feel tense in the shoulder. So we open up the chest by simply lightly pulling out. You can do fingers long if you've been on a keyboard. Might be a nice option, but if you prefer the light fist, go for it. Okay, so here we go. Pull the, the pelvis under, peel the hips up in the air. So that's part one. We all know this. Let's uh, just do three rounds of normal bridges. So inhale, arms go back. Exhale, roll the spine down. Try to articulate for those, through those final few vertebrae. Bring the arms back up. We'll do two more. Just readjust if you need to. Scooping up. Pretend you're hugging a little ball between the knees. Inhale, arms go back. Exhale, soft. Soften the sternum. Roll down. Try to resist the hips coming down as long as you can. And get that extra little bit of good work in the, the hamstrings and glutes. Arms up when you're done. Last one, we're add on. So scooping up. This time, so lock in your position. Arms go back, not quite to the floor, of course, but they're maybe a, a, I don't know, 10 or I don't know, a few inches off the floor. So we're lightly pulling up. We are going to pull the left hand band or the left side, the left arm will pull the band to the left. Glide your pelvis though to the right. So it's like the typewriter hip idea. You will bump into your own head with the right bicep probably. And then we come back to center and we go the other way, depending on where your arm is, but it's probably as low as mine. So you go left, the arms, right with the leg. Uh, right with the hips, excuse me. Uh, one thing with this one is watch your feet don't come off the roller. So it'd be tempting to just, if we go too far in one direction, we don't want everything going in that direction, just the hips and the ribs. The feet have to stay glued because we want relative motion through all these joints. So you go one way, you go the other, you get a really nice lap stretch, side bending, rib translation. Do a couple more, hopefully everyone's okay. Come back to the top, let's bring the arms up, roll down, and then you can stretch your legs out as well. Give that a little breather. All right, part two, pull the roller in. We're gonna lift up, arms up, lightly pull out, scoop up, slightly different patterning this time. This will be more of a rotation uh, with the hips. So if let's this time we'll leave the arms vertical, but pull down with the left side again, but this time just rather than behind us, it's just straight up. So we pull down to the left. We're gonna dip the right hip straight um, it won't be that far, but glide the right hip down a little bit to the floor without letting the right knee open up. So that'll limit us to some extent. And then we press everything back to center. So on this side, you'll be able to see better. So I'm just dipping my left hip down, but it's, it's like I'm hugging a little ball between my knees. 
So don't let go of the ball as you go side to side. There's a little invisible little ball between your knees. You're squishing it lightly. Let me see. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that's it. So we go four and three. So it's like the pelvis is going one, one way, the ribs are rotating in, in a sense, the opposite way. We come back to the center. Let's do the grand finale. Inhale, arms go back. But this time we can, you, you have two choices. You can either just roll down. If you want a little extra, push out the roller carefully so it's under the heels. A little bit extra work, scoot the pelvis, and then try to roll yourself down, legs straighten. Oh, and we stretch out into that elongated position. Pull the roller in. Let's pull it right into us again. We're going to go pop back on it again the way we did at the beginning. Except we'll use, do it for a band stretch now so you can pop your pelvis on top. Let's cover the um, right arch of our foot with the band over the ball of the foot. I said arch. I, I should say the ball of the foot. Maybe a bit of the arch would be a bit better. You get more calf stretch. So let's put the left foot on the floor, fairly close to the roller in parallel, and we'll bend the right knee. So both knees are bent. Uh, as we exhale, let's stretch both legs out. So the right heel presses up. Now it's okay if you can't quite straighten your leg. It depends on your hamstring, but try to keep it as close to your face as you can. Now you might be able to keep the left leg on the floor. I cannot. My left heel has to come off the floor if I straighten it. So I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm, I am going to try to straighten it because I do want the psoas hip flexor stretch, but I am keeping as low as I can and then drag the heel back in. So just try four more. So exhale for the lengthening. Push out through the band, push out through the other heel. Ribs are heavy. Inhale, release. So a couple more of those. Safe to say this is a pretty big sensation stretch. That's why I don't hold these stretches because there's a stretch reflex that doesn't want us to stay. It doesn't want to change. The brain likes to stay as it is. I mean, the body doesn't like to change. The brain will try to protect it from changing by tightening us up. So that's why I don't hold things too long. I don't want us to tighten up. The last one, push out and ease back. Now we'll do another set of those, except this time we're going to turn out with both legs. So the heel, uh, both things are bent, of course. So the right heel is over the pubic bone, roughly. The left baby toes is pretty much in line with the tailbone. And we can really just need the right hand for this one. So we're going to stretch the right leg to the right high diagonal. The left leg goes out to its low left diagonal. We try to keep the pelvis reasonably steady in the middle and then bend it back in. So let's try five of those. Bending on the inhale, lengthening on that exhale. Good. Stretch. All right, and then you can guess the next one. <laughs> so we go into internal rotation, so we cross it to the left hand. So the knees are sort of crossed. You know that yoga pose where you cross the knees or like you're sitting in a chair the way we're not supposed to? But it's almost like that, except the left foot will be on the floor a bit to the right. So we go stretch left leg, or excuse me, right leg to the left. I find I can't get my left leg over that far, so my... To be honest, my left leg is more in line with my, my tailbone probably, but I'm, I'm reaching in my mind to the left or to the right, to the right. So it's like I'm trying to do a scissor type leg. And let's do a couple more of those. Either way, it doesn't really matter because it, the focus is on the right leg anyway with this one. So you get a good outer hip stretch. Last one. We're not really twisting with this one. We're keeping more or less level. All right, so let's take the band off. Just before we switch sides, just put both feet on the floor for a second. Just recalibrate. Bring the feet fairly close to the roller, as long as they're parallel and your heels are still down. Float your hips almost, if not off the roller, depending on how long your legs are, and just glide your hips like that typewriter carriage again, side to side. It's like you're cleaning your rollers. Back and forth. Again, the arches stay glued to the floor. The, big, the, the foot tripod stays glued to the floor. Really nice for the ribs and the side hips. And let's sit back down for the stretch on the left side. Left knee pulls in. So let's do parallel first. So both feet are, or both knees, it's in the or bent, but both feet are parallel and stretching out. Bending, stretching. So you can either point or flex the long leg. I tend to do them both flex because I, that way I don't have to think so hard. But definitely I would flex the top foot, the left leg, because you want the stretch down the back of the calf muscle, unless you have sciatica symptoms. So you press and release. Last two. Just getting into those hamstrings. Let's go to turn out. Left hand just holds the bands. Knees are kind of floppy outwards, and we lengthen out, keeping the pelvis in the middle. And then and stretch. You get more adductor. Lateral hamstring. 
And last one of those. Let's do the crossover one. So here we go. Get that outer hip stretched out and, and stretching. Intention is to do a crossover. You may lose it a bit like I do. You may have more range than I do though. So you might be able to get your right leg a bit to the left. Not that it really matters. Just focus on the left side for this one. Don't need to be contortionists. <laughs> you want to be. I actually met someone who wanted to be so. But I knew it wouldn't work out for him because he didn't have the structure <laughs> or the genetics I need. So last one, just be happy with what we have and then we'll release. Okay, so let's, um, we'll take the band off, uh, plant the feet on the floor. You may just wanna just recalibrate if it's getting a little hot under there. And then we'll pull both knees into the chest. We'll go to the tabletop uh, double leg, it doesn't have to be exactly tabletop. I'm going to be a little closer, actually. But hands are pressing into the legs. The legs are equally pressing back. Don't work too hard with these because you only 30% is the magic number for the deeper core work. If you work harder, you end up in your accessory muscles that you don't need in your chest, etc., cetera, in your neck. So we don't want those working. So once you get the basic feeling of, oh, I've got a little low belly working there, we'll do the heel tap. So one heel taps away. And you guys are strong enough. You can go a little farther. You can go as far as you want, as long as you don't lose that connection. So if you poke yourself anywhere as you do these, you'll have a pretty firm abdominal wall. And you can still talk, laugh, have a conversation. You can inhale, you can exhale. It shouldn't really matter once, you, once you're skilled at it. And that's why we do these things repeatedly. So we just figure out how to get our ribs in the right spot. So just do a couple more of those. And let's finish that off. We'll just... Open the knees like a frog, grab your ankles. So I've, I've, uh, so I've just come through the center. It's the only way I can figure out how to grab my ankles. And then just tip the pelvis. So we're always in a lot of pelvic tilt, so especially in Pilates, but not that it's a bad thing, but sometimes it's good to come out of it. So just relax your pelvis slightly forwards. Doesn't mean the ribs have to go, but, but the sacrum has tipped forwards. It's quite nice to be supported by the roller. Uh, you can either stay still if you just want to wiggle a bit. That's great too. Depends on the type of roller you have probably. All right, let's close that up. We'll bring the knees closer to the chest. Lift your feet a bit so you can just roll this roller down so we can dismount. Good stuff. And just, you just want to move that roller out of the way. Just relax for a second before we will come up. But I just want you to, uh, to let the blood flow back into those muscles on your back. So you can feel that hollow sensation perhaps for a minute or two or hopefully less than that. But <laughs> okay, and then hopefully we're, Realigned, we can come on up. Okay, so let's do a little bit of, even though it's warm, hopefully, I, I know Meryl has air conditioning, I don't know about Sally, but uh, hopefully you're, you've got air conditioning, Sally. Um, we will do a little bit of core work. So we'll put the, because I've been a little nice lately, so we'll put the uh, roller under the ankles. We'll be in quadruped. So we can do this in multiple ways. The, the simplest way is to be in a neutral pelvis. It's the least difficult version um, in terms of, but it's not necessarily, doesn't mean that it's not as good a version. It just means it's neutral. So, so we'll have the index fingers straight ahead. The eyes of the elbows are forward. Obviously we don't want to be saggy in the ribs. So we collect them. We figure out where that is. We, we back the skull up as if we're under a coffee table and we're nudging our back skull into the table. And as we're ready, we'll exhale, pop the knees in the air. Without changing the spinal position. Yeah, that looks perfect, both of you. And then push the roller out without moving your chest for, and then just pull the roller in. You could pull it closer if you don't mind the massage over your toes. So exhale out, inhale in. So we can speed it up to your comfortable speed. We'll do about eight more. Push down firmly into the mat because otherwise we start to say that it's really good. Yep, yeah, excellent. Rest when you need to, when your wrists need to break, but we'll do a couple more to one good all right second one we come down onto the elbows and forearms and i'm just going to get i'll just face you for a second um, you don't have to come off your rollers but i just want to show you with the art with the hands this is just a little hand breather so just um turn let me think about this turn your left palm up and your left one or the other one can stay down and you just switch just a little forearm relief it's not nothing difficult you're just rotating rotating spiraling those bones before we get to the next event. Super simple. Now, if you're really tight, you may feel your shoulders moving. So ideally it's just, just, just this connective tissue here. Again, it's not, not difficult. You can let yourself shift a little bit from side to side. 
Now finish with the palms. You can you have two choices, palms down, but if that rolls your shoulders in, you may prefer the fist or the thumbs up position. So either way, we're the same type of thing here. So we're gonna exhale, pop, pop the knees in the air, push the roller out. Now we're gonna keep the roller here now with the straightish legs. Okay, so now, rather than moving the knees in and out, we're going to push through the forearms. So we move backwards away from our elbows and you'll feel your core has to work harder to stabilize. Make sure you stay in a forearm parallel position and then you pull back, maybe go further from where you started. So you push backwards, which has a certain effect on your core. And when you pull forward, it's more upper body strength. So back, well, it's all upper body strength to be honest, but back and forth. If it feels like it's too much, you can keep the knees a little bit bent and just don't go so far. So a couple more. I just realized I picked the hardest version of this. Sorry, guys. I knew normally do this with it under the quads. I just realized, oops. <laughs> and then we'll pull the knees in. Let's rest in child's pose. If you don't mind keeping your, your ankles up there. We just had the hard variation. So you survived. That's good. <laughs> Still here. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Now the last one will be a side, side plank variation. So we will start, let me think about this. We'll start on the elbow. We'll stay, let's stay down in the elbows, but just cross your right ankle over the left one. I think I have this right. Lean your hips to the left. Actually, I don't usually do this with my forearms, but let's see if this works. I just want to give your hands a breather. So lean your hips to the left and pop your knees in the air. Yeah, this should work. Pop your knees in the air and then just round your back. So we'll come out of neutral pelvis. This is actually a good one to do it on. Now we push out. So you will be straighter at that point. Pull the roller into your navel, or not the roller, but the knees into the roller. Push out. So we're not moving the chest with this version. We're moving the knees and the roller in and out. That's it. You got it, guys. So let's go for five. Now you could lift your hips higher if you want more work. Then you'll feel your bottom oblique working like crazy. Your, your chest is turned to the right. And last one. Oh, rest, <laughs> rest, rest. All right. Other side. Take a little breather. If you just let's do a quick child's pose. Spread the hands, relax for a second. We will stretch the side of the body after this, so don't worry, but let's do one more. So the key to this one, if you really want to get to the lower oblique, the, the main thing is the leaning. So you put your left ankle over the right. You've got to lean your hips quite over. I think you were both doing that, but just mention it just in case for anyone doing this later too. And then you pop your knees in there. And now if you really want more, curl your hips under. It doesn't have to be the neck under. It doesn't have to be the upper back, but it's the lower half of the body curls. That's a strong position. And then you just pull this roller in and out. Keep lifting your lower waist. Keep the turning of the chest to the left. Good, that's good. Let's so do as many as you want. Let's, I'm gonna count for eight, seven. Keep lifting the hips. If you want more, push into the arms more, lift the hips higher. You don't have to do it. Just a suggestion if anyone feels ambitious. <laughs> I don't think I feel that ambitious. Last one. Oh, and relax. Bravo. Let's rest. <laughs> Roll your way up. And let's do a nice side stretch. So I'm going to do this option, the kneeling on the shins. I like this one the best of all the ones I've seen on the roller, with the roller. But you may not like this. So if you prefer the mermaid, a uh, traditional mermaid like this, or if you want to have your cross-legged, it's totally fun. But this one goes a little deeper because you get a change of the, of the level of the pelvis. Okay, so if you're, if you wanna be on this, you can be on the same side if you want. So if we have the left hand on here, pinky finger, uh, right arm is bent. So we slide this out, reach the arm over the ear and just let your hips sort of slide off. This, this assumes a certain degree of ankle flexibility, of course. So feel free to, to not do this version. And then we pull ourselves back, but it's a good one if you don't mind the, the stretch in the ankles and the shins and everything else, the quads, <laughs> gets a lot of things done at once. So inhale, we go over, exhale back. That yeah, looks great. Two more. Oh, that feels nice. Feels nice after the work. Now this one will go over, hold, just slightly curl your tail on slightly under as you turn to grab the roller with both hands, both hands, you have to bend the elbows to pull it a little closer. That's it, chin's a little bit down. You, it's like you're sending your, like someone scooped out your front with a ice cream scoop and then you just push, the, it won't, it's quite small this, but you just push the roller. Focus on the front arm, that'll be your right hand reaching to turn your chest a little more to the back wall. So you get that nice stretch through your shoulder blade, right shoulder blade, among other things. So last one, 
And then let's bring ourselves up, put the roller on the other side. Feel free to shake out the legs if you need to. You can feel the sweat building up <laughs> there, but I'll deal with that after. <laughs> deal with that later. All right, <laughs> pretend it's not there. All right, so here we go. So side bend with a little hip drop. Watch this one, there's no rotation. Just a small, I, I mean, it's tempting to rotate, but we'll just stay in that frontal plane and then we come back up. So just to make sure we have the ability to stay in the frontal plane first. That's it, looks good. So ears, hips, easing the shoulders. We catch that shoulder coming up, just drop it. No one's doing that, but just mentioning it. And last two. Reach long through the top arm to get that little extra. And then let's add the, um, the, the rotational component. So first we go over purely in the side plane then we turn, pull the roller in, bring that for you, it'll be your left shoulder around a bit more. And then you just reach and reach, that's it. Yeah, that's it now, push. And I would breathe in for the reach and then exhale, return and last one. Good, and then we'll come back up. Let's stretch the legs long. Do a few roll up type things. You can wiggle to the front of your mats. Let's do the waterfall roll up today. So we can bend the knees. I wouldn't, you don't have to bend them too much, but just, especially if, if the roll up's a bit difficult, you might, if it's your body proportion issues too. You might have to have the feet, I'm just gonna have my feet here. If you have them here, it'll be very difficult. So just, just a heads up on that. So you can have your uh, roller on your knees. We'll just roll it down to the ankles. So we're in that little bit of a kind of a seated child's pose position. It's a great position to work on your breathing. So we'll inhale here. Just feel that nice three-dimensional expansion. Now as we exhale, let's roll back up. Roll the roller up your shins, looking across the horizon. And then we'll just roll backwards. So we can roll it down the thighs. I'm gonna bring my feet in a little bit actually. Just adjust as you need to. Roll down more or less one vertebra at a time. Roll it like a rolling pin up and over the face so we don't have to swallow the roller and then press it over the head. Oops, I have something in my way. Bring it back to the crown of the head, roll it over yourself, come up and over. Chin towards chest, inhale at the bottom, exhale, roll up. So let's play with that, we'll do two more. Articulating, rolling that roller. In a sense, the roller is just, it's not heavy, but you can pretend it's heavy to help you drop into the back of the body a bit more efficiently. Pretend it's a very, it's a 50 pound roller. Yeah, that may not be too blood actually. Maybe that's not a good idea, but something with a little more weight. And let's finish our last one. Scooping back. In Friday class, I have, there's, there's someone who has a cat sit on her. Anytime she lies down, so cat is helping. Probably a, not a very heavy cat, but. <laughs> All right, then we'll sit tall to finish that off. Let's, how are we doing? Oh, I'm 6.15. So let's finish today. Uh, we'll sit cross-legged. And we'll hold it in front. Just doing a simple twist. So stacking the ribs as we exhale just rotate to the right super simple inhale center rotate to the left and because of the position we're in it's pretty hard to move the hips right so it's not one of those fancy ones where we get to move the hips it's just very simple so you just rotate inhale center try to keep the hip flexors relaxed which might be the struggle <laughs> now do the same thing but look the opposite way so the eyes and the head turn in that position just to change it up a bit Now don't move the head, but, but move the, the chest and the roller. Get all our bases covered. Can you still move the ribs? Yeah, it's hard to not move the head, isn't it? It's interesting. Last one, just do the normal thing. Just turn, everything turns. You might find you go a little further than usual. Turn the other way. Trying to move mainly from the waist. And when you're all done, you can put the roller down, separate the legs, give them some air. And just uh, with the hands on, feel free, if you need a cushion underneath you, I don't think anyone does, but you can always sit on a little bit of a ledge and just roll the roller away. Kind of like a very wide spine stretch forward. Take a breath in, relax the neck, the inner thighs. 
And then one vertebra at a time, let's roll back up. Eyes to the horizon. All right, so good job. It's a working class today, despite the heat. <laughs> so I will try not to cut you off. Lately, I've been hitting the end button instead of the record, stop the recording. I don't know what's wrong with me. So anyway, I'll see if I can pull this off today.